Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. No, oh, what is wrong with me? I'm so tired. Listen. I don't mind at all. <laughs> I love As long as you get the diphthong right, the vowel sound <laughs> right. in the middle, yes. the consonant work. <laughs> You're the only person we have on, though, is so fascinating that like knows these people, that knows the Trumps, that's actually like hung out with them. Like This Jared Kushner story that came out, that 99-something percent of his money comes from foreign sources and and they keep going on with this hunter biden bs exactly. they're going to put this back in the way this one jared kushner chasing a deal that would wreck europe's last wild river i mean he's openly talking about you got to clear out gaza so i can build waterfront condos i mean i is any of this resonating what a bunch of I grifters this family is I hope it is, because Jared is the evil one behind this. What I observed was Vonky and Jared were playing the long game. Trump wants to get high when he walks in the room. Like I said in that thing, he wants to hit on women. He's about his immediate needs. Jared's playing the long game. And I just spent a week in Florida, okay? I have yeah. family in the area that he lives. He lives on, you know, Indian Creek Island. That's a private island for billionaires. Jeff Bezos is his neighbor. Tom Brady is his neighbor. You know, there's a huge industry in Aventura of investment banking. J.P. Morgan has, uh, you know, a, a, an office there. there. My point being, there's so much wealth in southern Florida, yeah. and all of assets under management for Kushner's head fund come from overseas, come from Saudi Arabia, come from UAE. He's not even trying to get local money, of yeah. which there's tons of it, which shows you how malfeasance-oriented his business plan is. He's getting paid back for what he did in the first term on behalf of MBS and Khashoggi, and it's an investment on future sort of favors such a it's huge na national and international security threat that it's just I, I, okay. one of our listeners said i only go to comedians for my news now i mean it, what is going on comedians are doing a better job than the mainstream media calling out trump and, and telling the truth aren't they yeah and i put you, you. And, your, and, and you know your <laughs> your your sort of ilk at the top of that list stephanie and i think the reason that is is cuz it's a it's an easy way to cut through the bs and the media especially the mainstream media is still locked in to sort of a different paradigm. It was a different world. When, when facts and truth aren't real and the other side will blatantly lie, you need to call it out as it as it really is, you know, because and people are hungry for that these yeah. days. Yeah. And it's just it, it, both sides do not do it right. Everybody keeps doing the quote. It's like if one side says it's raining, the other side says it's not. It's not your job to report that. It's your job to put your head out the window and see if it's raining or not. Right. 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 Like that's exactly. it. Yeah. Uh, it's because, about telling the truth, right? Comedy, the, everything, people laugh at like, oh, that's true, right? The best comedy is revealing something about yourself or a perception right. of the world, and, and people relate to it because they're like, yeah, that's true. That's and real. Th th that's they, how we need to approach Trump. Yeah, and the media normalized it in the first place, Noel, and that's why we're, partly why we're here is they keep normalizing this. Like, this is normal, having somebody under, you know, 88 criminal account, you know, uh, uh, charges in four trials, uh, adjudicated rapists. <laughs> That somehow, you know, and I keep talking about, you know, this trial that's about to start Monday there in New York where you are, Noel, is, you know, you forget you're like right after the Access Hollywood tape. This was like a couple days later, right before the election. If this had come out, I absolutely, I think it would have uh, in such a close election that Hillary Clinton already won by millions of votes. I, it would have absolutely blown up the election, which is why he did it. Right. Absolutely. It was election interference. That's what he's on trial for, right? For, 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 you know, campaign finance violations. And, and it should have come out. And it's also the reason I'm sitting here, Stephanie. Nobody knew who I was before that. I was a behind the scenes guy for 25 years and pretty happy with it. I had a, I had a decent life and a decent career. And when he ran, I said to my colleagues on Celebrity Apprentice, I said, we got to talk about this guy. We got to say who we, what we saw and who he really is. The dude can't read. He's snorting Adderall on set. He's using the N-word. He's a monster. He's an idiot. And they were like, well, he's not going to win anyway. Yeah. You know, and you're going to get in trouble if you speak out. And I said, look. I can't risk that because there's nothing on the other side of this guy. If he does win, we're all out of a job. Yeah. And essentially, that's what happened, right? Yeah. He mismanaged COVID. The whole industry shut down, entertainment and the global economy, you know? And and if I can say one more thing, I spoke with Hillary's campaign in that time in early October, yeah. and I told them what I knew. And, and they were sort of very confident because the Access Hollywood 
tape had just come out and they yeah. figured, well, that'll take him out, you know, and it should have, yeah. you know, it's, it's alarming that so many people still voted for him after hearing the way he spoke about women. Yeah. That should have been a deal breaker yeah. in my mind. And by the know? way, I thank you for speaking out. You are a patriot. This is why my now a warning t-shirt, because I don't know if you saw the John Bolton interview yesterday, but all these mother <laughs> that are like, now they're warning us. Like he didn't, he could have testified. It, when he when it was you know when he was asked to and put a stop there are so many times and uh, what's the word intersections we, we could that he could have been stopped right if I, you had I, decent Republicans and a decent Republican party and it, and then he talks about what an existential threat to the world Donald Trump would be in a second and and then they they ask who's he's voting for he's going to write in Dick Cheney like right. I, it, oh I mean your thoughts on all that. I was standing at 60th and Park Avenue, like the day after Bolton got fired or flamed out of the Trump administration. I forget exactly how it went down, but he walked right past me and he was up in New York looking for a book deal. That's what he was doing. Yeah. And he got one and he was looking to cash in. He should have been heading to Fox News and saying, hey, put me on air right now. This guy's a fraud and I'm going to tell you why for the good of our democracy. He didn't do that. They wait till they're safe and they're comfortable and they sort of partial, parse, partial out uh, whatever the term is. I can't talk anymore. I get so mad. Yeah. You know, they, they give you sort of safe criticism of Trump, right? Yeah. Nobody's really coming forward and th- spilling the beat. Yeah, and I thought Nicole Wallace did a great job, but, it, it, you know, we can't have a discussion about, do you even give John Bolton a platform to spew his, you know, bolt anymore? But, I mean, you know, she did just say, how do you square <laughs> you saying what an existential threat he is to the world and a moron, and you know, but you're not going to, you, you, they have to make the extra step before November and say any vote for anyone other than Biden, staying home, Bobby Kennedy, you name it, is a vote for Trump, right? They have to, yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I was down at the Tulane Book Fair a few weeks ago and there was a lot of big journalists, Heather Cox Richardson, all these big guys. And I was in a top, a talk with Liz Cheney. And I saw Liz Cheney get two standing ovations mm-hmm. from a very Democratic audience, right? I'm not a Republican. On policy, we probably disagree on everything else. But she said, you have to vote for Biden. You cannot vote for Republicans. This GOP is yeah. Trumpism. It's MAGA, and it'll destroy democracy. Yeah. That's the kind of talk you need. I mean, I hate everything else she stands for, but at least if you had you know, said I'm going to write in the Cheney that's not a thousand-year-old old and going to die in a right. second. <laughs> God. I mean, they're all evil. Just at least pick yeah. the one that's... <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's talk about Eric Trump, who you know. <laughs> he appeared on Fox News when asked about the upcoming trial uh, by Brian Kilmeade. He pointed out his father is mandated to be in the courtroom every day of the trial. Uh, that a factor that could cripple his campaigning. Oh, tiniest of violins. Hang on. He said for six to eight weeks, he could be stuck. Sorry, I got to get my Eric teeth out. He could be stuck in a New York courtroom. That's Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10 hours a day. How do you overcome that? What is his plan to overcome it? It's not going to be a a surprise. Uh, Eric said every single time he walks into a courtroom, millions and millions of dollars flow in because the American people know exactly what's happening to him. (laughs) I mean, is this grift just going to go on forever? I mean, I I mean, and by the way, do you trust that, that... he, the fifty million he says he made at this Mar-a-Lago. No, <laughs> like, no, no. Why does the Very, media report yeah. something? Just say Trump says. Don't say, oh, it right. just happens to be double what Biden made. The guy that tripled the size of his apartment says. <laughs> Exactly. There is no way it was 50 million. You know, the 25 million was true. And you knew that day that that right. figure would be doubled by Trump. And he said it. He said, I'm going to raise twice as much in a couple of weeks with this event. I was down there in Palm Beach. I wasn't at Paulson's backyard or Mar-a-Lago, but I was in the area at a hotel. And there's just no way they raised that much money. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. I, well, and, I can, can I just say on Eric Trump, we called him Twizzlers. That was my nickname because he would steal all the red Twizzlers off the craft service table. <laughs> And left. Ah. So, um, Trump. Well, I'm now, joking. now that is disqualifying because that is now that's a bastard person. Thank you for that. No, you never know it's going to be the last drop of water in the full glass. Right. <laughs> so, Miles Taylor, former, uh, you know, the uh, he was he's anonymous, uh-huh. or as Trump would say, anonymous, 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 anonymous. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
he's been kind of a corraller of ex-Trump officials willing to come out against him. So he was on Nicole Wallace. Uh, he revealed he spoke to one former cabinet official who's not been willing to come out publicly yet, uh, but is against a second term. Uh, Wallace said, where is everyone? Where is everyone who knows that he is a clear and present danger? Um, he said that is hopefully significant enough to give Republican voters who are disaffected the air cover they need to not put this man back in the White House. But that means getting those voices actually out there, getting them uh, um, out on the air. He said there's so many people who uh, have courage, but there's still many unwilling to come out publicly for fear it will destroy their careers. I mean, it is extraordinary. First of all, how many people have destroyed their careers for Donald Trump, yeah. <laughs> but that still remain afraid of this ridiculous bully, Right. I, I agree. I mean, it's just cowardice. Some things are bigger than you. This is a moment that's bigger than you. I guarantee you most of those people that are afraid already have a house in McLean. They already have a 401k. Their kids are out of college. They have enough out of life. Risk a little bit and stand up for future generations because that's what we're talking about. This is yeah. an existential threat to democracy. I get why it was easy for me to walk away from a, you know, talent management career as a PA or something. You know what I mean? Like, but even that, I suffered. I haven't made any money since I since 2016. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm okay, but I don't make any money. Because like money doesn't matter if 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 you're gonna be spending it in a fascist state. You, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, you know, we're having a former Republican congressman, Joe Walsh, on uh, is coming up. And, I, again, probably don't agree with him on hardly anything. <laughs> we used to make fun of him all the time. You know, I love that, you know, when he was on uh, Nicole Wallace, he said, you know, I used to be a divisive hole. <laughs> you know? But, you know, he's talked about, I mean, oh, my God, the hate he gets and the death threats and, you know, his blew his career up, obviously. <laughs> You know, as did Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger. But you're right; they're, they're just I, this party has lost sight of putting country above party, haven't they? Or even they just sure one have. man. It's not even party right. anymore. Yeah. And they're the first ones to hide behind the iconography of American exceptionalism, right. right? We're heroes. We won World War II. Here's a flag. Here's a medal. We honor our troops. How are you honoring the young men who died in the mud in Guadalcanal? You know, to fight imperialism and fascism who gave their lives for this country, who, who fought in a miserable campaign for freedom. How are you honoring them by not willing, you know, not being willing to stand up to this monster? History's not going to judge you kindly for stand or unkindly for standing up for Trump. They're going to yeah. say that was the right thing to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, like, for instance, I just, this new uh, Trump media, it just, you do wonder, like, when will the grift finally be up? Um, the headline is Trump media share price, the greatest feat of, hut, uh, feat of huspa ever uh, in the stock market, according to an expert. Stock in the newly public Trump media company is completely worthless <laughs> as a financial investment and only exists for political purposes, said a prominent financial expert. Um, so it had surged to a high of $66 a share following the merger that took it public, but has that been on a downward spiral ever since as experts around uh, sound the alarm that Trump's public promotion of the stock uh, could... <laughs> Is another crime could run afoul a foil of a foul of federal securities rules. The initial valuation of the stock put the company's worth at nine billion, which the experts said is ridiculous by any measure. Uh, hey, every story about him is the same, right? They said uh, Truth Social is highly unlikely to ever make money, not only where it's an annual sales paltry, only slightly above that of a typical McDonald's franchise, but those sales dwindled as the year progressed. The platform headed in the wrong direction, um, valuing a company that generated only $4 million in revenue last year at $9 billion, he said, is the greatest feat of chutzpah I've ever seen in the U.S. stock market. I mean... What does Rick Wilson say? Everything Trump touches dies. 100%. I mean, that's the biggest grift, and he is running afoul of, of securities laws. And look, the two kids who brought it public, they were young men in their 20s or 30s. They met Trump in a diner in Fort Lauderdale, literally in a greasy spoon, and said, you know, they were the ones who brought, you know, the thing public, right? And Trump <sighs> met them and said, I need you to hand over more shares to Melania. He yeah. shook him down after it went public, and the guy nervously was like, I can't afford the taxes if I do that, sir. I got to hold on to my shares. But he tried to, to, you know, to screw them out of the work they did. <sighs> One of them was a former contestant on The Apprentice. <sighs> They're both now suing him in Delaware 
right? He's countersuing in Florida because he has a district judge in Sarasota who's going to, you know, rule in his favor. But it's just bonkers. It's not only everything dies, he rips off everybody. Oh my you know, God, he can everyone. have to loot his shares. He could, he could issue another million shares to himself and their share decreases, let alone the stockholder. The general public that buys that are, are crazy because they're going to lose every dime. Yeah. Oh my God. 